the freelancing red flags since sobrang patok na patok ang freelancing dito sa Pilipinas ang daming mga virtual assistant agencies na lumalabas what are the red flags that you should look out for para hindi naman kayo ma-scam sayang yung oras ninyo to apply in an agency um, or any that claims to be an agency tapos maluloko lang din pala kayo so sayang yung time nyo sayang yung effort nyo, sayang yung time na i-google nyo doon. But before we deep dive into that, you better stay up until the end kasi explain ko sa inyo why the notion of too good to be true can be a negative and a positive connotation when it comes to freelancing. So stay up until the end to find out why. But anyway, welcome again. My name is MJ. I am a virtual executive assistant working in an agency. Well, hindi na pala siya agency ngayon. We are no longer considered as freelancers in Athena Executive Assistance. So I'm working for a Philippine company named Athena Executive Assistance as an exec virtual executive assistant. I've been with um, this company since May of 2021. Woo! I have also been working with my client, my first ever client in Athena, and still my client up until this very moment. Wow. I've been working for them since June of 2020. Um, prior to being a virtual executive assistant or a freelancer, I have no other experience except for in, in the call center industry as well as owning my own wedding and events business. So, going back to our topic, what are freelancing red flags that you should look out for? This is specifically more, not on the client side, but more on agencies and companies that are hiring virtual assistants. So, first one that you should look out for is if this agency or company is asking you to make a payment for you to get hired. Okay? So, walang agency or company sa Pilipinas or kahit sa ampang parte ng mundo na legit and genuinely hiring employees or freelancers or virtual assistants that would ask you to pay a down payment kahit piso pa yan kahit 100 pesos pa yan they will not ask you hey for you to get work you have to ask me you have to pay muna 100 pesos what's that 100 pesos for it's for training there's no such thing Okay, yun, yun yung one of the signs. But as long as they are not asking you to pay, they are just asking you to go through the application process, a specific application process that they have in their company. And it differs agency to agency or company to company. Um, hindi sila pare-pareho ng mga application process. But as long as they have a proper application process, it's a good-to-go agency or company. So, yun ang pinaka-first one. Inuna na natin yung pinaka-pinaka-importante sa lahat. Okay, next red flag that you should look out for is if this company does not have any social media presence. They can not have a TikTok, an Instagram, but as much as possible, they should least, the least of it all is they should have an official website. Okay? If they don't have an official website or it doesn't look professional, there are a lot of wrong spellings, wrong grammar, then nope, that's a red flag already, even if they do have an official website. They should also have at least a Facebook page. If they don't have a Facebook page where you can see reviews and um, marketing materials, then that's another red flag. The next one would be a little bit tricky. Well, when I say tricky, just a few um, companies do this, especially if you're a startup. They might not have, if they don't have an Indeed page, and a LinkedIn page. Now, for virtual assistants kasi, or sa freelancing, a lot of them would definitely have LinkedIn pages. That's because they get a lot of clients from LinkedIn. 
not, they don't get a lot of virtual assistants, but they do get a lot of clients from LinkedIn. So they these agencies or companies would um, show the LinkedIn pages to a potential client. So definitely they should have a LinkedIn page. If they don't have any of those um, social media platforms or social media presence, then that's one more red flag that you should not um, entertain any of those companies. Next red flag would be if they don't have a proper application process. Kunyari, nagsimula lang yan na parang, okay, we're hiring this, we're hiring virtual assistants. And you can earn as much as 10,000 pesos a day. Okay. Message me how. Okay. And then pag message mo sila, very, ano lang, ang sasabihin lang nila sa'yo is, just send me your ID and your bank account and then you're scheduled for an interview. And then that's it. And then sabihin nila, okay, you can start na now. That's no, 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 no. It's not what companies do or legit companies do or agencies do. So, talagang hindi talaga siya maganda. They can be legit, don't get me wrong. They can be a legit company, but they don't have proper processes wherein it gives you job security. So, it's a very suspicious type of company kapag wala silang proper application process. So, you should look out for those things. Another thing when it comes to the application process, yung kapag sinabi nila na um, no resume needed, just send your name and your bank account. Parang, okay. Bakit walang application? Bakit walang resume na kailangan? So, yung mga ganan meron, no, no, no na yun. And take note ha, these things are not easy to come by. Kahit anong trabaho naman, kailangan pagtrabahuhan talaga natin. Kapag it's too easy, it just means that there's something fishy about the process. Um, To find good work, you really need hard work in terms of the application process. Kahit naman hindi ka dumaan sa isang kompanya or sa isang agency, even if you go directly to a client, you would still definitely go through a lot of rejections. But, alam mo yun, they still have an interview process, they'd still like to review your resume, you'd still have to present them a proof that you're, you're, you are really doing this job, or alam mo yun, they definitely ask proof of um, your experience, whether it be a direct client or through an agency or a company. So, yun lang. Um, that's one thing that you need to look out for in terms of tagging an agency or a company as a red flag. Next red flag that you should look out for is if they are asking you to do free work prior to hiring you. So, you have to make sure na yung application process niya is parang a uniformed application process wherein you're just gonna answer an assessment and then yung mga assessment nila, if it's an output-based assessment, it should be parang similar with everybody. Or if, if you are under the creatives industry, let's say you wanna be a social media manager or a social media marketer, tapos pinagawan ka nila ng, let's say, ito yung gusto ko, um, I want to have a campaign na like this. Can you create uh, 10 posts for this campaign? Parang mag ano ka na, mag doubt ka na sa ganon kasi it's free work especially if you already have a portfolio, why would they need you to create an additional output? Then it's something that, you know, it's a red flag already. Same goes for looking for direct clients. Next red flag that you should look out for, this is also affects even the legit, <laughs> legit agencies and companies, especially if startup yan. If you see... Um, feedback from current applicants or current employees, current VAs saying na they are not paid on time. Wag na. Okay? They might be a legit company, but they are not paying their employees on time. It just means that they don't have good management. They don't have a good finance process or accounting process. Because when you are a company, ang first priority mo all the time is to 
to pay your employees on time or your contractors on time if naapektuhan yung sweldo ng mga tao mo. It just means you have really bad management. So, don't apply muna. Maybe if they were after maybe a few months or after a year, nakita mo that they have improved their process, their employees are no longer saying na they're not being paid on time, then you can decide to apply with that company after. Another red flag is if the company doesn't provide you with a contract. Lahat ng kompanya, whether it be an independent contractor or you are a freelancer, and even if you are not going to apply to an agency and you are going to look for a direct client, you will provide your client with a contract. Okay? Kasi nakasaad dun sa contract niyo yung mga details ng mga tasks na gagawin mo if you have specific tasks that you are assigned to do. Yung hours of work mo, how much you are being paid, yung mga terms and conditions mo na, oh, if you do not pay this on time, this will terminate our contract. If you violate this, blah, 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 this is to terminate our contract. So, nakadetail lahat doon. Because it secures both you and your employer or your client. So, it's very important that you should have a contract. If talagang interesado, interesado ko dun sa kumpanya na yun, let's say talagang wow talaga yung package nila, unfortunately, wala silang contract, eh, ikaw mag-provide ng contract. You're a freelancer. You own your own business as a freelancer or as an independent contractor. So, you can provide your own, own contract, definitely. Um, huwag kayong matatakot, especially if you're a freelancer. Huwag kayong yung matatakot sa mga agencies or sa mga client na sinasabi, no, no need for contract. You show your professionalism and tell them, oh, okay, so if you're not gonna provide the contract, I'm gonna provide the contract for us. These are the things that I'm going to do for you. This is the pay that you offered. These are the benefits that you offered. So if you don't provide me any of these benefits that you offered, um, you are obliged to pay me this amount and it will terminate our contract after you make the payment. Alam mo yun, just for your own security, you can definitely be the one to provide the contract. So yeah, contracts. Contracts are very important, especially for us freelancers. It's going to um, protect us at the end of the day. Um, moving on to the next red flag is if they have unusual payment methods. <laughs> When I say unusual payment methods, let's say hindi sila dumadaan sa mga bank. Alam mo yun yung ang dami-daming loopholes. Alam mo, meron akong natrabahuhan during the um, the middle of the pandemic. I think that was 2020 talaga. Um, hindi ako nabayaran because they were really, really, really fishy people. So yung payment scheme nila was um, the payments from the clients will go through the team leader and then the team leader will be the one to pay out sa inyo um, bahala na kung ano yung mga bank account nyo. If wala kayong local bank accounts, they will padala sa inyo through Palawan, through Cebuana, yung mga ganon, Lulier. Um, so it was... Very, very complicated. The payment process was very complicated. So that's one thing na talagang, mm, um, no, this is definitely not a legit company. So yeah, so that's one thing that you should definitely look out for. Another one, ito yung biggest, biggest red flag talaga that you should look out for. Pero this red flag kasi can go both ways. It can either be um, a good, good, it, it might be a green flag and it might be a red flag. So, depende talaga sa company. Um, so, this is, if you feel like something is not right, or if off, feeling mo off, or you feel na parang too good to be true yung offer ng company, then it should be a red flag, but do your research also. Now, why did I say na it can be a green flag and it can be a red flag also? Number one, because nakukuha ko kasi ito na feedback sa kung saan ako nagtatrabaho ngayon. Nasasabi nila, oh my God, that's too good to be true. Hindi totoo, scam yan. It is 
too good to be true, especially if you came from um, the BPO industry or the call center industry. Kasi ang starting rate natin sa call center industry, siguro malaki na yung mga 20,000, 21,000 for an agent. Especially if you are an agent with no experience or prior work experience, you are an undergrad you are a fresh grad with no work experience. Um, your starting rate will be between 16,000 to 20 or 21,000 pesos. Pero kasi agencies now are providing um, a starting rate of, like sa amin, 46,000 pesos. Whether you have experience or no experience, as long as you pass training and you get matched with the client, your salary will be that much. Tapos meron pang MacBook Air, meron pang HMO, may optical, may dental. So talagang pack na pack talaga. Those things talaga are red flag at the beginning. Especially too good to be true. Especially galing tayo sa call center industry. Now, why do I say na it's a green flag? Based on your research. Like for example, sa Athena, ang dami-daming um, hiring ng Athena, um, Nakikita mo din naman na we have Facebook page, official, official website, we're very active on our social media, you can see our reviews on Indeed, on LinkedIn. Makikita mo talaga na legit, pero parang too good to be true, na parang oh my god, totoo ba talaga to? Well, the reason is yes, totoo. So why does a company um, na start up can give you that much sweldo and that amazing benefit because ang baba ng overhead cost nila. When I say overhead cost, they are not paying for rent. They are not paying for electricity. They are not paying for internet. They are not paying for IT people. Diba? They are not pay paying for janitors, for security guards. They are not paying for ID, ID system, um, building security system, carpets, stations, they are not paying for all of this. So, ang laki-laki ng natipid nila. So, yung overhead nila, instead of giving it or paying rent or all of these added expenses, binibigay na lang nila sa sweldo ng mga tao nila, di ba? Yung iba naman, yung red flag naman, pag too good to be true naman, yun yung mga tipong talagang sasabihin nila sa'yo na, hey, you can earn 60,000 pesos a week or 100,000 pesos a week. Di ba? Parang yun, Wait, <laughs> tapos ano, work from home and then flexi time, tapos 100,000 a week. Tapos yun naman pala, yung mga 100,000 a week na yon would entail you a lot of sales work. Parang kikita ka sa komisyon, pero ang base pay mo is 18,000 pesos. Pero sasabihin nila, earn as much as, be careful dun sa word na earn as much um, as 100,000 pesos a week. Um, because it might be a real job, pero ting na nyo din, baka naman yung 100,000 a week na yon yes, definitely it's too good to be true, but might be possible, pero you need to sell a lot, you need to like work your A off, diba? So, um, those things you have to definitely look out for. One thing that's very important also is when you're searching for work, yung mindset mo dapat at the beginning should be, lahat ng kumpanya to, red flag yan. <laughs> lahat yan dapat suumpi sa isipin mo, o lahat yan red flag. Kahit gaano pa kasikat yan, lahat yan sila, red flag. Okay? And then, ang gagawin mo is, i-research mo ngayon lahat ng kumpanya nila yan. Hahanapin mo yung mga reviews ng mga employees, hanapin mo yung mga social media accounts nila, mga LinkedIn pages, Indeed, Indeed pages, Job Street, kahit ano pang mga job platforms, hanapin mo lahat doon. And then, do your research. Before you even hit the application form, before you even hit the link in their bios, do your own research. Para talagang ikaw mismo, you have the accountability na, oh, I did my own research. I'm accountable for my research. I'm accountable in knowing na I did enough research on my own about this company. So, alam ko na totoo yan. Alam ko na legit yan. Alam kong walang red flag yan. Yung ganon. Alam kong babayaran ako yan. Alam kong maganda ang reviews niyan. ba? Make sure na before ka mag-apply sa isang kumpanya, is accountable ka doon sa pag apply mo na yun. Accountable ka na hindi mo sisisihin yung ibang tao na sasabihin mo, ah, hindi si MJ. Sabi niya, legit eh. And then I'm like, oh, okay. So, if sinabi ko palang tumalon ka, tatalon ka kasi sabi kong legit na pag tumalon ka, may trabaho ka. 
di ba? So, hindi siya ganon. You be accountable with your own research. So, you have to make sure na you do your own research. And, yun nga, yung mindset mo dapat is always, all these companies, no matter how amazing they look like, no matter how amazing um, their benefits look like, always, always um, do your own research. Yun lang. Yun lang yung... Um, Uh, I, I want you guys to um, look out for when it comes to red flags in freelancing, um, especially freelancing companies, agencies, yung mga ganyan. Because, guys, sa totoo lang, um, as someone who is a first-time freelancer, um, I've been doing freelancing bago pa lang, just less than two years. And ang masasabi ko talaga, nasa... Nasa freelancing talaga ang pera. And the amazing thing about us Filipinos is magaling tayo, matatalino tayo, um, masisipag tayo. And eh, you just have to really learn how to become a freelancer, learn how to become a virtual assistant. Um, if wala kang niche na maisip or specialty na maisip, especially hindi ka naman creative, Um, or if you're the type of person na hindi naman creative, then go into general virtual assistant or like me, virtual executive assistant. Um, if you want to learn more about what I do as a virtual executive assistant, kasi hindi siya niche specific, um, ibig sabihin, hindi ko kailangan isipin na, ano ba ako, social media manager ba ako? Ano ba ako ganyan? So being a virtual executive assistant kasi is puro ka-admin work. So as long as marunong ka namang mag-research, more on heavy on research, matututunan mo. And if you're someone na can easily learn things, um, willing ka mag-upskill ng sarili mo, then become a virtual executive assistant. You can check out my YouTube channel for tutorials on how to become a virtual executive assistant. I am also selling an online course. If you have the budget, you can enroll in my online course. It's how to become a virtual executive assistant. If wala kang budget, walang problema, hindi mo kailangan bumili kasi I'm still providing free content on my YouTube channel. So you just check out my YouTube channel. If you want quick, free um, content, you can also check out my TikTok page everything i will um, provide the links in the caption down below so thank you thank you so much for your time guys um i hope you enjoy kayo at may natutunan game i'll see you again guys next week thank you so much guys for your time and enjoy guys you have a good day bye